Hello, I'm Jared, and you're about to listen to a BBC Trending podcast. But before you do, just a heads up, it's audio, only audio. So stick this on while you're cooking, dinner, walking the dog, or in the bath, or just stare at a blank screen for 23 minutes. We're trying something new here, and we hope you'll like it. Enjoy. In America, political extremism is on the rise, online and on the streets. See, I get very violent in fights. I, this like, is Rob Cantrell. Like He's the leader of a local chapter of a group called the Proud Boys. They say they're a fraternal organization, a beer drinking club, but they also go to right wing political rallies and they get into fights. Marx is judgmental pieces of shit. You can't tell us how to live. This is America. Please leave now. This is America. Leave you. This is a public Rob and the Proud Boys march in Portland, Oregon, a city in the Pacific Northwest of America. It's known for hipsters on bikes, micro-brewed beers, and hippie vibes. And now, regular, recurring street violence. When the Proud Boys come out in Portland, there are others who come out to meet them. I think it's ridiculous that these group of nativists, white nationalists, and right-wingers keep coming to my town and keep bringing their hate to my town. Luis Enrique Marquez is an anti-fascist, or Antifa for short. When right-wing and far-right groups march in Portland, he and his Antifa comrades come out to meet them. Luis has been arrested several times. He's not afraid of confrontation. You want to talk to me? Hey. You know where I'm at, you want to talk about hiding? You come find me. You come find me. This is BBC Trending, the podcast that brings you in-depth reporting on social media and how it affects the world. I'm Mike Wendling. This week, as part of the BBC's Crossing Divide season, we'll continue our look at America's political extremists. Rob and Luis are far outside the mainstream of American politics. They exchange insults and threats online. And at our request, they've agreed to meet in person. But can they find any common ground? I think he's a misogynist. I think he's violent towards women. And I think he's a racist. He's obviously ignorant of who I am. Uh, I think he's violent on the street. Proud Boys have been told, make a video renouncing hate in the Proud Boys. Go away. You want us to just walk off a cliff? How do you see this ending? Badly. Before the meeting, I went to find out more about Rob's group, the Proud Boys. It started in 2016 by a co-founder of the magazine Vice, a guy named Gavin McInnes. They call themselves a fraternal organization. They have three official steps to membership, an initiation that is both political and silly. Step one, recite a slogan. Go. I am the Western Shoulders, and I refuse to apologize for creating the modern world. The second step is naming five breakfast cereals while getting smacked by fellow Proud Boys. All right, boys, on three. One, two, three, go. Six, one, one cereal, two, cross the plate, three. three. Level three is to get a tattoo. There's a fourth stage, too. Members are a bit cagey about exactly what it entails. It's handed out for getting attacked by an anti-fascist, fighting in the streets, or getting arrested. In Portland, the Proud Boys march along with another far-right group, Patriot Prayer, which is based in Vancouver, Washington, just across the Columbia River. And so I headed to a Vancouver bar to meet up with a local Proud Boy chapter. We gathered outside on the other side of a busy road, and although it was freezing, they came out in their distinctive short-sleeved Fred Perry shirts. What kind of levels are you guys? Four. I'm a fourth degree. Fourth degree. Fourth degree. Fourth degree. You guys have been involved in the rallies that have been going on here in Portland and some of the clashes and sometimes they get a bit violent. What's been your involvement in those? Uh, I think a lot of us here participate. Um, we usually try our best to uh, have an attitude of uh, defense only, self-defense only. We don't want the violence. The TV only shows the violence. The Proud Boys say they're persecuted for their political beliefs. 
But the Southern Poverty Law Center, an anti-extremism foundation, calls them a hate group. And in cities across America, Proud Boys have been arrested after getting involved in brawls. How do you guys react when people call you white supremacists or Nazis? Let me answer that one. <laughs> How do you? Let me answer that one. My dad's from Mexico. Okay, I'm half Mexican. It is so funny to have a white Antifa guy call me a white supremacist. The Proud Boys insist they're not racist, but they're deeply involved in political violence. If you hang out with them, you'll get offered a beer, and they'll tell you they're a fraternity, a brotherhood. But the politics are never far from the surface. Recently, their national leader was seen right behind Donald Trump at one of the president's rallies. They came out in force to support former Trump advisor Roger Stone. A former Proud Boy, Jason Kessler, organized the bloody Unite the Right march in Charlottesville in 2017. Rob Cantrell, who heads the Southern Oregon chapter of the Proud Boys, told me about the group's political ideas. Ten ways to save America, which is what we're trying to do. You know, we're trying to save the way of life that freed him and not let it turn into some oppressive communation. The list of ten principles includes things like legalize drugs, venerate the housewife, one of them is uh, abolish prisons. If we can abolish prisons, that would be great. What would you do with criminals? Well, you know, if, you, if people, you know, like one of the, the other tenant is everyone has to give everyone a gun. So that would take care of some criminals. It's a mix of gender traditionalism and hardcore libertarianism. Most are fans of Donald Trump. Yeah. Put it back. At the house of one of the Proud Boys, across the river from Portland, the gang is drinking beer and lifting weights. I talked with Tiny Tuese. Tiny is an ironic nickname. He's an enormous guy, originally from American Samoa, who can be spotted in countless videos filmed at the Portland rallies. How many times have you been arrested at these rallies? Altogether, 18 times. Assault, harassment, and mostly um, disorderly conduct. Anti-fascists say they are building their own communities that groups like Patriot Prayer and the Proud Boys are coming in and actually interfering with that. And it's kind of similar to what you guys say about your group. They're being selfish. Not everybody in Portland agrees with them. And if they're trying to build a community, it's a community of mass ninjas that does not follow the law. The night before the meeting between Proud Boy Rob and Antifa activist Luis, the anti-fascists are meeting at Luis's house for some takeout Indian food. They're finishing painting a banner with a cartoon version of Donald Trump. They're planning to hang it on a busy highway overpass as a protest. That's one form of political action. But I ask about the political activity that they're most known for, directly confronting far-right protesters in the streets. I put it to the Antifa activists that the right-wing protesters say they come out to support free speech and tolerance. They're supporting a president whose policies have real-life consequences for folks that they're claiming they're accepting it. And I'm not, not recognizing them. I'm not quite sure what right they've lost. I'm not quite sure. Have guns been taken away? What they've lost is the ability to yell the N-word. What I get when I talk to the Proud Boys last night and talk to you today, there's one thing that I get, and that is solidarity. And I'm just wondering how you think that your sense of solidarity might be different from theirs. Ours runs deeper. <clears throat> oh, yeah. We, talk, we have solidarity. They talk about it. In the front window of the house, there's a hole. Luis shows me where a brick came in, and that hasn't been the only attack on this house. My partner and I were asleep on our couch. Um, we hear something hit the window. I thought it was the cats. I opened the door and I look, and this had hit the window and fallen down to the side of the house and was shooting out flames. That way, just filling up my neighborhood. Did the police ever find who was responsible? I don't call the police. I don't call a group of people that are out to harm me to try and protect me. The anti-fascists don't trust the police because they're fundamentally opposed to the authorities. 
Added to that, last month, messages were leaked. Hundreds of emails and texts which had gone back and forth between the leader of a right-wing group and a Portland officer involved in policing the political marches. The messages discussed Luis and other anti-fascists. An investigation was promised, but it's unlikely to change the minds of the Antifa activists. They rely on themselves. We spoke to one activist, a military veteran, who isn't afraid to go to rallies armed. I carry a gun with me at all times. I mean, I really don't like guns, honestly. When I got out of the military, I had gotten rid of every weapon I had. Do you have a gun now? Oh, of course. Even in a place like Portland, it's that real? Yes, and I will say that the last time I was assaulted, I beat my attacker physically without shooting him. And I have to say that I feel like that's a level of restraint that the police would not have. Can you show us the gun? She pulled out a small but serious firearm. I also saw how things can escalate walking around the neighborhood with Luis. So this is my neighborhood. It's um, a working class neighborhood that's starting to be regentrified. We see with the- On the way to a local barbershop, we were chatting about the city where he grew up. But then Luis spotted someone in a car. Okay, so there's a guy in the car right oh, there who's rocking a three percenter good. shirt. Yeah, so yeah, we yeah. want to keep it moving. The three percenters are a militia organization who have marched with the Proud Boys. Luis and the man in the car make eye contact. Excuse me, this gentleman right here is in a three percenter shirt. Um, what's up? Get the f out of here. F your three percenter shirt. Your militia hoodie. It's not malicious. Your militia hoodie. Is it then? It's from power. Yeah, get the f out of here. I don't give a f about these cameras. That's my producer Linda. You can hear in the background trying to calm things down. Sorry about that, Mike. What just happened? That man was wearing a three percenter T-shirt, whether he wants to admit it publicly or not. That's a militia. The three percenters stand with patriot prayer, with nativists and nationalists. I don't want them in my neighborhood. I apologize for that display, but he made me really, really uncomfortable. And the uncomfortable part has just started. Coming up, anti-fascist Luis and proud boy Rob meet face to face. It had taken months of negotiation to get to this point but I wasn't sure that they would actually come until both of them arrived. Let me take a quick look in the bag for you. Definitely. Security guards scan them for weapons. Because he lives in his car, Rob's brought his cat Marley into the venue. The cat was not armed. We took a seat in the basement of the cannabis club. Murals on the wall, a bar in the far corner, three burly security guards watching warily. And then the discussion began. All right, guys, so look, first of all, I'm just going to go over the rules. Okay. We don't want any violence. Number one, no violence. No violence. Can we stay seated? Stay seated. Stay seated. I know that it's going to get heated, but yeah, things were tense up. from the start. Rob was raring to go, and he started to smoke right. cannabis oil. No Marijuana is legal in Oregon. But Luis, wearing a cap and sunglasses, was on his guard. Hey, Luis, will you take off your glasses, dog? I feel so much more like I'm like interacting with you if I can see your eyes, dog. No. Okay. No? Well, yeah, man. All right, that's cool. I'll tell you what, man. When you take your glasses off in about 15 minutes, I'll understand. All okay, right? all right. Let's start. I'm going to start by asking you what you think of each other. Luis, what do you think of Rob? I think he's misguided. I think he's a bigot. I think he's a misogynist. I think he's violent towards women. And I think he's a racist. That's I think he's uneducated. Oh, it's got more. And I think he's misguided. Do you want to respond to that, Rob? He's obviously ignorant of who I am. You're not those things? Let me see. I'm a misanthrope. <clears throat> so he almost got me with misogynist, but I'm a misanthrope. You don't like people? 
no, if you look it up, you don't trust people. I don't trust anybody. Humans suck. What do you think of Louise? I, I tell him he's ignorant of who I am. Uh, I think he's violent on the street. I think he's trying to duck out of responsibility. My dad always told me, you go to a protest, you end up getting arrested, don't cry. Own it. Okay, so Louise, respond to that. That's funny. Um, I'm violent. I'm not the one that's been caught multiple times on video cameras threatening to burn down bookstores. I'm not the one that's been caught on video camera threatening to punch women in the face. So it's pretty interesting. I want to directly confront the elephant in the room, the threat of violence that is in the air every time the Proud Boys come out into the streets to march and the anti-fascists confront them. So I show each of them a YouTube video of their own aggressive behavior. First, Rob, and a video of him threatening to burn down a left-wing bookstore. That is the worst fucking excuse. Fucking commie yes. scum. Okay, give me a good reason. You're commie scum. Reason. We're going to burn down your bookstore. You give know me that. a fucking good reason. Okay, we have you on recorded that you say you're going to burn down our bookstore. Get rid of Marx is judgmental pieces of shit. You can't tell us how to live. This is America. Go to the burning books. Please leave now. This is America. Fuck you. This is a public thing. Why don't you Rob, how is that ever justified to threaten to burn down a bookstore? I am so justified in telling those fools I was going to burn down their bookstore. You think so? Rob went on to allege that the owners of the store were involved in rioting in Berkeley. There's no evidence that that's the case. It's a conspiracy theory popular on the right-wing fringes. You think you were totally justified in doing that? Yes. It's not illegal, is it? I think burning down a bookstore is probably illegal. Is it? I, I could give if I could find a way to do illegal. it legally. Would you guys all like stop hating on me on that? Rob is unrepentant. Now it's Luis's turn. I show him a video of himself at a rally, exchanging words with a right winger. Hey. You know where I'm at, motherfucker. You talking about hiding? You come find me. You come find me. You you come find me. You come hiding. Come hey, little hey, 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 hey. So I'm going to ask you the same question. How is that behavior justified? I didn't say it was. And in no way can it be justified. That march turned into a personal feud between me and a right-wing journalist. And that in no way is right. It takes a big man to say something like that, no? Could it be the glimmer of a breakthrough? The conversation continued for an hour and a half. There wasn't much agreement at all. Rob, in these marches, you and your group, Proud Boys, other right-wing groups, you come into Portland, you don't live here. Isn't that provocative? It is provocative. These cause violence, these rallies. Oh, violence? Oh, so okay. Don't you... I'm glad to go back to the violence for a bit. And is, I, is I, it, I just look... want to respond to that for a second and say that I am. I'm a violent man. And I know a violent man when I see one. From my own eyes, and from my experience as a violent person, I know that you're a violent person. These groups, Rob is part of them, they say they're just exercising their freedom of speech. You want to stop him from doing that? The freedom of speech gives you a right to speech. It does not give you a right to platform. It does not give you a microphone nor does it mean that there are no consequences for your speech. A lot of people in Portland will say, to hell with both of you, that these rallies and these counter-protests just bring violence, destruction. Do you care what they think, Louise? Absolutely. I absolutely care what they think. Then how do you answer that criticism? They're right. But the violence only comes from one side. If they stood shoulder to shoulder every time fascists came into our community, not even shoulder to shoulder, just out in the streets, they wouldn't come anymore. Rob, do you care what they think? Not yeah, really. I was taught not to care. I was raised not to care what other people think about me. How does what's happening in Portland end? How do you see it end? Proud Boys have been told 
burn your Perry. Make a video renouncing hate in the Proud Boys. Go away. <laughs> That's how it ends. You want us to just walk off a how, cliff? How do you see this ending? Badly. And I want to ask you one more question, which is, has anything changed in your mind as a result of this meeting, Louise? Honestly, more sorrow, more sadness. The fight's gonna be longer. <laughs> Man. Rob, has anything changed in your mind as, as a result? I respect you meeting? less now, dog. I thought I was going to respect you more after this, man. I respect you even less. There was no meeting of minds. Maybe the encounter even made things worse, made Luis and Rob hate each other more. But at least it all went off without violence. My team and I left Portland the next day. But it wasn't long before we heard more news from the city. A union hall had been vandalized. Someone had written Antifa House on the side, and they also vandalized a nearby bar. Rob and Louise weren't involved, but it led to yet more fights between Antifa and Proud Boys. That's it for this edition of the BBC Trending Podcast. My thanks to our team, Natalia Zio, Linda Sills, to Shannon McCormack and Mary Rose Muscroft. If you want to hear that whole conversation between Louise the Anti-Fascist and Rob the Proud Boy, we've put the whole thing up on our YouTube channel. Just search YouTube for BBC Trending. You can use our social outlets to get in touch, or you can just email me directly. My email, michael.wendling, W-E-N-D-L-I-N-G, at bbc.co.uk. Let me know if I can read your message out on an upcoming edition of the podcast. And if, like me, you're always on the lookout for new things to listen to, may I suggest another podcast from our colleagues here at the BBC World Service? It's called 30 Animals That Made Us Smarter. In this podcast, we bring you stories in which four billion years of evolution have been harnessed by people trying to find solutions to modern problems. From dolphins helping us to detect tsunamis to spiders helping us to roam around on the surface of Mars, each episode is a fascinating look at the wondrous properties of an animal and the human innovations that they've inspired. There's a preview up online now. Just search for 30 Animals That Made Us Smarter, wherever you found this podcast. And BBC Trending will be back in your feed very soon. Music